Okay, so first of all, let me thank uh, Jonghe and uh, Yongnam for organizing this conference and for inviting me here. It's always a big pleasure for me to be here. And um, I will talk, I will continue the talk of Fabrizio, so I hope you have everything what he said in your mind. No, I mean, actually, I'm talking about uh, Inue surfaces. And you see, Fabrizio, he gave a very general setting which grew out of uh, uh, certain surfaces we were con considering or moduli spaces we tried uh, to understand. And we realized that it's sometimes very useful if you have a big fundamental group which allows you to understand the connected component of the moduli space and uh, worked out examples of uh, what Fabrizio called Inuit-type manifolds are the following. So the first example that we considered, so let me put here, I'm talking about the joint work with uh, Fabrizio. So the first example uh, are the so-called primary Burnia surfaces. They are surfaces with uh, k squared equal to 6 and pg equal to 0, firstly constructed by Burnia as bi-double covers of the plane. But there is another description which was found by Inoue, and this is uh, you take a hypersurface in a product of three elliptic curves um, and you consider a set mod 2 squared acting on them. You consider them as set mod 2 squared covers of P1. Um, so you forget about one translation by two torsion. Um, and the hypersurface is of type of class 2, 2, 2. And it's invariant under a subgroup of this direct product. So it's invariant under a subgroup which is isomorphic to set 2 to the third and S is x hat mod g and these give the, the uh, this yield a, a four dimensional connect irreducible connected component of the moduli space. So this uh, was done by Fabrizio and me. Then there is a second example. You do exactly the same, just that you don't take the group set mod 2 squared, but set mod 3 squared, and you take uh, here the Fermat cubic. So um, these are surfaces which were constructed originally by Kulikov, um, also a set mod 3 squared to the third coverings of uh, the plane and they are a hypersurface of class 333 in now you cannot take arbitrary elliptic curves but you take just the Fermat cubic and then you get uh, pencil of uh, invariant hypersurfaces by the group Z mod 3 to the 3 and S is X hat mod G and you get a one dimensional irreducible connected component. This was worked out by uh, Mario Chan and Stephen Coughlin. So the third example is again due to Inoue. Um, 
so here you take uh, you take x hat in um, a product of two elliptic curves and you take a curve of genus 5 but you cannot take any curve you have to have a z mod 2 to the 4 acting on it and here you have z mod 2 to the 3rd and here also and then you take x of type 2, 2, 4 uh, invariant under uh, G which is set mod 2 to the 5. And of course I maybe forgot to say all these groups because we have this Inua type manifolds they have to act freely on this ample hypersurface. <coughs> okay and then you get S uh, which is again the quotient um, which is uh, k squared equal to 7 and pg equals to 0 and this gives a four dimensional irreducible connected component and then there is a, th a fourth this is k squared equal to 6. Up to now, these are all surfaces with uh, geometric genus 0. We have another example. In a certain sense, we can do the same what we did going from here to here. We can again do with z mod 3. And we get um, x hat in uh, the Fermat cubic times the Fermat cubic times d. This is now a genus uh, 10 curve and here we need a set mod 3 uh, to the 4 acting on it. I'm sorry, it's a set mod 3 to the, uh, so it's ramified in 4 points. Sorry? No, it's 3. Let me check. I think so. Least. Okay, and I need a, so it's the maximal set mod 3, something covering ramified in four points. Um, okay, so, uh, and here you have a hypersurface of degree um, 3, 3, uh, 9, and G is isomorphic to set mod 3 to the 4. And then you get a quotient uh, S, which is x hat mod G, and this has uh, PG equal to 1 and K squared equal to 14. So this example, let me call this semi worked out. So we have this example, but we get four different actions yet on this. Uh, we cannot yet decide to this give different uh, surfaces, okay? Um, so just to show that there are really examples where one can do something. And now what I want to do is in this talk is explain in details this example to see what we can do with the main theorem that Fabrizio announced today and what is still to do to fill somehow that we get really something on the moduli space. Hmm? Okay. So let me give you first the construction how I like to see uh, this uh, Inue surfaces. So <coughs> Okay, so I take three, co three copies of P1. And then here I consider them contained each in a plane. So um, they have equations sum yi is equal to zero, sum vi equal to zero, 
some uh, wi equal to zero. Okay. Um, just to get the, and then I take of each um, p1, I take the set mod two squared covering, just taking the roots of the coordinates. Okay, so I have set mod two squared times set mod two squared times set mod two squared. And again, I get P1 times P1 times P1. So if I take Xi squared equal to Yi, uh, Ui squared equal to um, um, uh, Vi, and so on, then I get the three conics. So it's uh, Xi squared equal uh, to zero sum uh, Ui squared equal to zero sum uh, Ci squared equal to zero. Okay, and now I want to go to E1 times E2 times D. So what remains is I have set mod 2 times set mod 2 times set mod 2 squared. Okay, so what are the equations of uh, um, of E1. So I just take the double covering ramified in a, uh, in a conic. So if I restrict here, I get P1 ramified in four points. So the equation is x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x, x3 squared equal to zero. And then I get a new variable x0 squared plus x1 uh, a1 x1 squared plus a2 x2 squared plus a3 x3 squared equal to zero. The same is with e2. So I have uh, u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared equal to zero. And then I have u0 squared plus b1 u1 squared plus equal to zero. Okay, and then I want to have the curve D. So you see now I see my elliptic curve as an intersection of two quadrics in P3. And then I get D. Okay, here I just take uh, I take the bi-double cover ramified in two quarter, in two conics. So I have the equation C1 squared plus C2 squared plus C3 squared equal to zero. Then I have C, uh, oh actually I wanted to write it like this. I mean, it doesn't really matter. So C1, C0 squared equal uh, alpha one, C1 squared, alpha 2, C2 squared, alpha 3, C3 squared, and then I have Z4 squared equal uh, beta 1, Z1 squared plus, and so on. Okay? Now, you see, what is the good thing here is I have a genus, I mean, first of all, with this, the action of this C mod 2, uh, to the 10, you immediately see, you just take plus minus the coordinates, okay? The second thing is you also see here, if you project on the plane uh, forgetting about C0, you get a double cover of an elliptic curve, right? This one. So, and also if I forget C4. So this means I get naturally D contained in, let me call it E0 times E4, okay? In the product of two elliptic curves as a divisor, an ample divisor of type 2, 2. 
Okay, so this is how I want to see this covering. Now, I take here, um, so the first observation is, if I take a del pezzo surface here uh, with equation um, y1 v1 w1 is equal to um, y2 v2 w2 here, and I pull it back here, then I get um, x1 squared uh, u1 squared and so on is equal, so it splits in two del pezzo surfaces. So here above I have y plus union y minus and y plus minus is nothing else than x1 u1 mm, z1 is equal plus or minus uh, x2, u2, z2. Okay? And now my surface x hat is nothing else than if I call this pi, this is nothing else than pi to the minus 1 y plus this is x hat here inside. Now you see, what happens is obviously this is invariant under this group. I claim x hat is invariant in fact under a group, so x hat is invariant under g, g zero, which is uh, set mod two to the seven. Okay, so now if I take my y plus here in p one times p one times P1. Of course, these are now if I work with xi, yi, zi, these are conics. So I would like to reparameterize them. And let me just uh, do like give it coordinates differently. So now the action of this group here. Let me call that group H. How is this given? Now, of course I can change Ti with plus minus Ti. And then I can also change Si with Ti, okay? Now what, I mean of course, what, what are uh, transformations which leave y plus invariant? So, um, so y plus is invariant. So y plus now is of course, I have to rewrite it, this is nothing else than s1, s2, s3 equals t1, t2. T3, so is invariant under, yeah, there are two transformations, so I can map Ti to epsilon i Ti, where epsilon i is plus or minus 1, and I need that epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3 is equal to 1. Yes? And then I can exchange each si with tau i for all i. Okay? Now if you look at this at the quotient, you see if I take this quotient here, then y plus union y minus just maps again to a del pezzo surface. Right? And then you see if you change so if I um, take um, Si squared equals sigma i and sorry, uh, Ti squared equals tau i, then it maps to uh, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 equal to tau 1, tau 
two, two, three. So you get again a del pezzo surface. And then if I just change sigma i with tau i, what happens is that I get four isolated fixed points, sigma i uh, equal to plus minus tau i, and then the quotient is a four nodal cubic, right? So this is a del pezzo surface of degree six, and I get four isolated fixed points, so this is a four nodal cubic. Okay? So what I have here now is, so this means I have x hat, and then I have um, um, this set mod 2 to the 4, which goes to this y, I called it y plus, but it will become y, and then I have a set mod 2 to the 3, which goes to c, which is the 4 nodal cubic. And I want to find, I want to give another factorization of this map. This will be my s, so this is set mod 2 to the 5, and this should act freely. And then this is, will be important later that s is a bi-double covering of the 4 nodal cubic. Okay, so now what you can do here very easily, I mean this is explicitly given, so you can just ask the computer to find all actions um, which, uh, uh, I mean, which are in this G, G, all subgroups which are in Z0, and you can ask when it's free, and you get exactly one group, okay? Once you have the group, you can write it down and you can verify easily that it is uh, a free action, and I would really, I would now, uh, go back to the original notation of Inue, which is easier to convince you about what's, ha what's happening, but for finding really um, this action, it's, for me it was much more difficult because it's an affine equation of the curves. So let me... Notation. So he takes an elliptic curve given in uh, the Legendre normal form. So he gives an affine equation which is like this. So A is the parameter of the elliptic curve and I want uh, that A is uh, not equal to plus or minus 1 um, and it is, uh, yeah, okay. So uh, and then he takes, he calls this the double covering, this is a double covering, if you map to x, right, then it's a double covering of P1, and it's ramified exactly in plus minus 1 and plus minus, sorry, A. Okay, and now I write uh, my elliptic curve as C mod a lattice, where I just uh, choose one generator, I call one, and then tau. And then it's clear set mod 2 to the 3 acts on E in the following way. So I give you generators, so one transformation you map set to minus set, in order to go down to P1, and then you take uh, the half periods, translations by a half period. So one is one half, and the next is... Okay. And then, um, you see, you have to choose here, you have already chosen an origin, and uh, I mean, you can do this as soon as you fix over these four points, there are the four two torsion points, and I fix an or origin, 
So I, I want that P of zero is um, one, P of one half is minus one, P of uh, tau half is A, and P of uh, the fourth one is minus A. And then it is clear that uh, P of uh, um, tau fourth is a root, a square root of A, and this I want to call B. Yeah, okay, so this is, uh, you see if you have to take this, if you take this pullbacks of the del pezzo surfaces, we take roots, also here we take a root. Um, okay, now you see it's now easy to see also how this P, this meromorphic function transforms with uh, the elements of the group. So let me just write this uh, um, P of um, minus Z is P of Z on, and this is the same as minus P of Z plus one half and uh, P of Z plus two half is equal to A divided Okay, and now I give you the uh, so this is okay. Now I give you the action of the group on a product of four elliptic curves. So Inua gives the action not on D directly, but he gives an action on a product of two elliptic curves and um, uh, and sees D as this divisor of type 2, 2. Okay? So, now, I want my group to be Z mod 2 to the 5 and I give you generators um, G1 up to G5 uh, acting on the torus which is the product of four arbitrary elliptic curves um, so G1 of C1 up to C4, this should be, so it's clear that now, I mean, I, I call my coordinates C1, C4, and then there will be also tau 1, tau 4, but 1 half will be the same for everything, but I think it's clear nevertheless. So it's minus C1 plus 1 half, C1 plus 1 half, C3, and then you permute cyclic I'm sorry yeah um, C1 minus C2 plus one half uh, C3 plus one half uh, minus C4 plus one half. I'm sorry, this is now takes some time to write it there. It's better to use a computer, I mean to use a projector. But, uh, okay, so here it's C1 plus one half. Um, C2, C3 minus C3 plus one half. Um, C4 plus one half, and then G4 is equal to C1, C2 minus C3 minus C4. 
Um, and G5, which is special, I will just make also ready a line here. So this is just a translation by Tor half. I talked about Z mod 3 to the third on each curve. Now I have only Z mod 2 squared here. So it's C1 plus Tor 1 half and so on C4 plus Tor 4 half. Okay, and now, so this I want to keep this notation because many of the calculations unfortunately depend on this particular action. That's somehow an obstacle to generalize it. And now let, let me give you x hat. This is now um, c in t with the property that p3 of c3 times p4 of c4 is equal to b3 b4. So this is a special constant. It's just, you know, this a is fixed and b, b3 is the root of a3, okay? And then the second, so this is just the curve d, right? And then I take the complete intersection with the equation p1 c1, p2 c2, p3 C3 is equal to B1, B2, B3. So I claim that this action of G, so this is invariant under G. This you can check immediately here because if you, the P, this P, this meromorphic function, if I, multi, if I uh, have translation, I have to multiply it by minus one. So I have minus one, minus one is one. So you have to look that it always has an, in the first three, an even number of translations. Okay, so for here it is clear that it's invariant. There I could take any constant, almost. But here, so if I transform it here, see, the last element, I have uh, P of uh, C1 plus Tor 1 half, P of C2 plus two half P of, so this is P1, P2, P3, C3 plus Tor 3 half, and then I get A1, A2, A3 divided by P1, P2, P3 of C1, C2, okay? Okay, this means, um, yeah, so if, if this is equal to A, uh, to, uh, so this is C, and if this is also equal to C, C, C squared has to be A1, A2, A3. So you need this special constant here. And then you can verify, so this action definitely has fixed points on the torus. This element has fixed points, but they don't lie on this hypersurface, so G acts freely. And what I get is X hat mod G, and this I will call an Inua surface. So by an Inua surface, I mean I take any hypersurface or any, let me, I take any complete intersection for arbitrary curves, but then I have exactly this equation, okay? So now you see. <coughs> so the, the B3 is just because you had affine equation. Right. If you homogenize, homogenize. Right, the right. So, I mean, it is easier to deal with elliptic curves rather than with curves of higher genus because you have this uniformizing parameter. But from this description, it's a complete intersection of non-ample divisors, so the fundamental group you cannot calculate. So, 
easily from this. If it's an ample divisor there, you immediately see that the fundamental group so x hat is an ample divisor here oh, I'm sorry d and therefore I have this exact sequence so it's uh, c4 times the fundamental group of a curve of genus 5 E1 of S G. Okay? Um, so now let me again state the theorem. So the first, the first statement is if S prime is homotopically equivalent, S prime is a smooth projective surface over the complex numbers which is homotopically equivalent to S and in in a surface, then S is S prime is an inua surface. So watch out, I'm really calling an Inoue surface this here. It's not an Inoue type manifold, okay? Um, second, um, so you see immediately that this gives you a four dimensional family because you have the four parameters of the elliptic curves you can choose freely and you have one uh, x hat. So, um, uh, um, in US, the, well, let me call it the, con the connected component of uh, S in, let me call this the moduli space of canonical surfaces with uh, chi equal to 1 and k squared equal to 7 corresponding to S is irreducible, um, well unirational, that's clear because it's uh, just parameter, I, I give you a rational parameter space um, and it's uh, uh, generically smooth, it's even normal of dimension 4, well we can say more that the, for each surface the base of the Kuranishi family is smooth um, it is known, this was shown by, already by Inoue, um, that S is, uh, always has ample canonical class. And then let me just, uh, um, we also calculated the first homolo homology group and this is Z4 times Z2 to the fourth. Well, let me comment on this. We do not know the fundamental group. Yeah, we know it sits in an exact sequence, but we do not know the action of G here. So, well, not completely. I mean, it's not so easy. So it was, it's not completely trivial to calculate this uh, homology group. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, with this, yeah. Anyhow. Okay, so <clears throat> now according to how much time I have, I will comment on the proof of this theorem. Um, okay. So now, let me call this uh, proof of the theorem. Maybe I do like this. I, of course, will not. So, the interesting case is, of course, first of all, part one, because, I mean, uh, 
One has to look closely what it means, what is still to show after the main theorem that Fabrizio proved. So first of all, let me observe that S is, of course, a classical Inuit type, a special Inuit type uh, surface or manifold of dimension two, which is classical. So um, uh, S is a S I T manifold. Huh? Prime. Type, I'm sorry. I bet it's S I T. No, no, S prime. S prime. S is also. First of all, S is one. S prime we have to show. Okay, wait a second. No, I mean because there are some subtle points in it. That's really true. So first of all, now we assume S prime should be homotopically equivalent to S. So first of all, I'm not supposing Ks is ample. Okay? This is the first small point, which is not really serious. So what does the theorem of Fabrizio give? So S prime has the same fundamental group. So you also have this X hat, which is this G covering of S prime. And you get your map to a product of two elliptic curves and with D. Okay? That's what Fabrizio called, I think, phi hat. No, phi. Ah, well, anyhow. Now you see, just you have an image here. Okay? So now Fabrizio had this assumption that the class of W is not divisible. So, of course, um, it is clear that the image class from homotopy e equivalent, you get that the image class of uh, uh, X hat prime here inside is the same as, as that of X hat, of the corresponding X hat here. So it is 2, 2, 4. Now we want to conclude that this map has degree 1. For that, the indivisibility was useful. Now it could be a double covering of something of type 1, 1, 2. Okay? So there we need an, invari an, an argument that this is G invariant. And there is no hypersurface of type 1, 1, 2, which is invariant under this big group. Okay, so this is the first subtle point. This, so we can assume that this is um, to uh, W prime here. That this is uh, birational. Okay? Now, you see that here we know, of course, that because we are in the sur surface case, this assumption that k squared remains equal, this comes automatically. So we know that kx hat prime squared is the same as kx hat uh, squared, and then by a junction you see that this can only um, this W prime can only have rational double points, otherwise they couldn't have the same Kx head square. So a junction implies that W prime has only rational double points. Now, you see, now we have the situation, forget about these rational double points, this doesn't really matter. But now we have the following, that our surface, S prime, we get S, so S prime is now X head prime mod G, where um, X head prime is... Uh, 
E1 times E2 times D. And it's a divisor which has class 2F1 plus 2F2 plus 4F3. But what the theorem gives, this was the lemma that Fabrizio wrote. So let me call this main theorem the one of the first talk. Implies we get on E1 times E2 times D the action of Inue. Okay? On E1 times E2 times D the action of Inue. But it could be as well that we find another invariant hypersurface which is completely different and which gives a completely different surface. Okay? So this is the extremely subtle point where the, the weak rigidity, what Fabrizio mentioned, becomes very, very important. You see, as soon as I can prove each homotopically equivalent is really an Inoue, I have a parametrization, I get a four-dimensional irreducible family. But assume I have two different hypersurfaces. Then I get two families and I have no idea whether they are isomorphic or not. Maybe they are not. So for moduli, this doesn't tell me anything. So how can we see this in this particular case? So you see the point on this weak rigidity problem is the following. So you see, we have to deal with special divisors. First of all, our curves are not general. This is not a general curve of genus 5. It's a, general, it's a curve of genus 5 having a certain group action. So, of course. So, <laughs> No, no, because you were saying... It's an intersection of three diagonal quadrants. I know. <laughs> um, oh, I just put it away, but anyhow. Yeah, but this is, uh, is parametrized by a connect... It's connected. So this is important there. And then we might have here not a linear system of divisors, like in the other cases, a pencil, but just isolated ones. Um, so, you see, the point is the following. I do not want to go now in details, but what you can do is, so the difficulty is that you have these isolated divisors. So I know the action of Inoue. So I just forget about G5. So why do I do this? Because then on my elliptic curve, I find a divisor, an invariant divisor of degree two. So this linear system, H0, is a set mod 2 squared module. So I can use representation theory, character theory, use Kunitz formula, and can show that here there is an invariant pencil. So in fact, what one can show is the following. So I have H0 of, uh, uh, let me call this zeta here. And let me be, please sloppy in the notation. I call this 2, 2, 4. This doesn't make sense. But I mean, I take the pullback of 2 times a point on one elliptic curves of 2 times, uh, okay? So this is a, a So if I call this here H, this subgroup. So this is an H module. And I decompose it by Kunitz formula. It's just a tensor product of H0, O, E, 1, 2, tensor, H0, O, E, 2, 
of 2 tensor H0 of O D4. This I have all dimension 2, so it's a C to the 8. Then I decompose this G module and as character spaces there comes four pencils which are done, these are the characters, so these are, uh, well I don't know now how they are exactly, let me just check, mm. no. Okay, so I have four pencils. Wait, now I have to chosen, I mean I have on the divisors I have an action on projective space. So if I have an, a, an invariant divisor, this doesn't mean that the equation is invariant. It has to be just an eigenvector. So I have to look at each of these pencils. And these pencils are essentially, so this pencil, I can see the equation. This is P1, P2, P3, is a constant. Here, I don't know now in which, but the other ones are pi, pj, 1 over pk constant. So you see, 1 over pk, it's just I compose p with 1 over x, so instead of the elliptic curve, with parameter a, I get 1 over a, so I get again an Inoue equation. Okay? So I can, without loss of generality, assume that I, my equation is of this form. And then I have a pencil. And now I look what G5 does. G5, if, it, if I take a divisor here, then G5 of lambda C is linearly equivalent to lambda C. So I have an involution on this P1. It has two fixed points and actually this is one and then I can also take minus B1, B2, B3. But this means just I exchange tau over four with tau over four plus one half. So this shows that um, it is really S prime is really Inoue. Okay? Good. So you see, this is a subtle uh, business. But it is really, I mean, if you ever tried to uh, understand. Uh, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> If you ever wanted to understand um, the moduli spaces of surfaces, it's in general easier to show that something is an irreducible component. If you're lucky, you have an n-dimensional family, you calculate the h1 of theta, the tangent space, it's n, so it gives you an a n-dimensional irreducible component, showing that it's close. An open, yeah, the closure yields, uh, okay? Uh, you get an irreducible component. But if you want to show that the closure is a connected component, this is really very hard because you have to study degenerations and then you have to study the deformations of the degenerations. So I think it's really worth the effort to clear up these subtle points because you get the closeness for free. Okay? So now, in the last five minutes I wanted um, to get to the point two of the theorem very briefly and this is because I was surprised that this method works. It worked also in other cases. So as I told you we have a four-dimensional family, okay? Now it is sufficient to show that H1 of S theta S is equal to 4. Okay? So this we have to show. But now, <coughs> so we know that um, chi of 
theta s this is uh, h2 of theta s minus h1 of theta s so this is uh, 2k squared minus 10 chi so it is uh, 14 minus 10 so this is 4 okay since we know that h1 of theta has to be bigger or equal to 4, it suffices to show h2 of theta s is less or equal to 8. This is trivial, you only have to hope to get the inequality right. But and here comes the point, I said that S is uh, the bi-double cover of a four-nodal cubic. And uh, studying the bicanonical map, Margarita Mendes Lopez and Rita Pardini they described uh, S as a bi-double cover of a, a of the four nodal uh, cubic and so if you have a bi double cover you have devices d1 d2 d3 the branch devices and how to calculate so it is clear to so we just take a uh, ser duality and split h2 in characters so invariant um, so 0 1 2 3 according to this uh, right and so what we have to calculate is so h0 the invariant part is h0 of omega 1 set uh, this is now the four nodal cubic I'm sorry I called something else or the blow up of the, the four points actually. Um, mm, log d1 log d2 log d3 and then kc plus uh, nothing. This is the invariant part and then you have to calculate, this is not difficult because minus k um, has no fixed part so you can somehow go to map it to uh, omega 1 log d1 log d2 log d3 and it's just you have to calculate the rank of the churn classes yeah if you go to the residue map and then in h1 omega 1 I think you've written down this strongly negative. I'm sorry? You've written down doesn't have any h naught. Yeah. With the cubic surface. Yes. K, K is negative. It should not. This is the h2 invariant, which should be zero. So it will be, so I told you, I, I just wanted to say, it's rather easy to show it's zero, okay? <laughs> but if you have positive twists here, it's getting more dif difficult, okay? You have the you must use you must use the D1, D2, and D3 feature classes which are linear in the back. Instead, H2 of theta S I for I equal 1, 2, 3, this is H0 omega 1 set log D1 log d2 log d3 kc plus li okay and now here you have positive twists and of course you have this is not zero because I mean um, it is eight the sum of these so what is the idea you use the following exact sequence uh, it's a very trivial observation I was very surprised that it works so if you have
So I want to compare this one. So I have, do not need many assumptions, just that these devices are normal crossing devices. And then the co-kernel is omega 1 nk n1 plus uh, nk plus m. Okay, so first observation is if in all these cases these nk are isomorphic to p1. I think it's uh, omega 1 log di. When you take the i character in the first line. Oh, I'm very sorry, you're completely right. This was my fault, yeah. Log di, log di and then you pair it with the i. Okay, anyhow, but these CIs, they have many components in general, several connected com components. Okay, so now if this is P1 and the intersection here is less than 2, it has no sections and this is the same. Okay, otherwise, you see, I mean, um, otherwise, so if uh, NK um, N1 plus uh, and k plus m is equal to lambda and this is bigger or equal to 2, then uh, you get uh, an inequality h0 omega 1 y log n i n1 up to um, log n k minus 1 n k plus and k plus m is less or equal yeah the log n i when one up to n k cancer m and now you have plus um, lambda minus one okay it is very surprising because it's just an inequality but it's not, what you do is, you have this, you have this one, okay? And then you shuffle apart here, and you shuffle back, and you eventually end up with something which out, without twist. And you keep track of the inequalities, and then you verify what is the rank of the churn classes. And I didn't believe, but in all cases where you have a family of dimension n, and you have a, a so, I mean, it can be that the dimension is really n, or the h1 of theta is really n, it worked. So these inequalities become then equalities. That was also how Yi Fan Chen proved uh, the um, irreducib irreducibility of the cum, uh, the, the surfaces uh, with k squared equal to 3. So. I'm sorry, I'm already over time, let me just finish. So there is, I think it's very interesting still, we have these examples of surfaces. There are still many quotients around which should be studied. I think, I mean, we can show that this Inu surface is unique um, as a pullback of this Del Pezzo surface. But still, there could be other pullbacks of surfaces which give surfaces with k squared equal to 7, especially in view of that it's so hard, I mean it's the only example known of uh, uh, surfaces of general type with k squared equal to 7, pg equal to 0. So thank you.